this is uh, nothing very worthy to speak much about, but it's just uh, so basically I have uh, here you're going to have uh, the objects of your scene. I'm raying it uh, with itself and deleting everything uh, have it something so is what is not exposed to the top right. And I'm doing this instead of just a normal sum, because otherwise you would have some pieces, uh, maybe not on this object, uh, or maybe yes, like for example here. Yeah. It with the normals uh, you would have uh, the geometries anyway. But since I'm ring it uh, and is hitting this, uh, it's going to be deleted uh, and uh, then it's not going to emit uh, drops from here. Here it is, some additional cleanup by normals. So it's just an extra pass. Here I'm scattering. Here I'm uh, faking some uh, particles, like some rain drops collisions. If you see, with some wind. And uh, yeah, and with the pop net, I'm emitting from these uh, small spots you've seen before. This one. But this time uh, is with some wind too. And he's doing this. Huh? Which is quite a lot, I admit, for, for this object, but uh, uh, it is what it is. Uh, no. Okay, uh, another relevant thing is this transform. And uh, it's just to move it uh, up a little on the surface, uh, just a little. So you can see it in the render, otherwise, uh, I did these particles which were uh, a little bit inside of geometry and they were not very visible. So it's just to make sure they are completely visible. Uh, and same thing as before, I'm creating some, creating some lines uh, and signing a shader. Okay, now the 3D mist, 3D mist box, uh, as I called it. So that's everything that it is. It's basically some grids facing the camera, which are moving according to the to a world space noise. So no matter what the camera is doing, they will always be correct. And as I mentioned before, uh, I found this, uh, I mean, I'm not 100% sure it would always work in production, but uh, if you're doing your own personal project, uh, this one can save you quite some render time. I think I think it was like I don't know ten times faster if you use the right settings in Mantra. So it was quite valuable for me since uh, I also like at the time I didn't have the good uh, workstation. So. Pa -pa. First thing is that I create a line which is going from the camera, uh, which is here, to a, to a distance that uh, I decide. It doesn't really matter. In my case, I just made it uh, like uh, as far as uh, like a little bit behind the spaceship uh, is up to you. It's just what looks better. And uh, it's controlled by these parameters. So if you get these, uh, you, you can just use these instead of going node by node. Um, so here I have a line, here I decide the segments. 
and I instance on them some boxes. Chair flat, points from volume, so now the like grids. So. Oh, and to notice uh, is that this parameter is connected to this, uh, the point separation, just to make sure that uh, each of these ones has only see it doesn't have many particles on it okay it, to, just to make sure it's very thin and to save uh, memory and to save uh, render time here i have some noises uh, right i'm merging them together so i'm layering the two noises that i've created here and then uh, here i'm setting the Speed attributes. You can see. It's moving. So this is like the mist that uh, is like falling from the sky with the rain and here we have the same setup uh, which is just uh, close to the ground and i've done this with this uh, ramp so. okay. yeah if it's disabled it, you, you can see it like that mm, one thing to mention which uh, I think is also important, is in this case, uh, I have not flat grids, uh, but uh, I applied some noise. And the reason is that uh, this one is probably colliding uh, or intersecting with a lot of objects. Uh, and uh, if you have it flat or too thin, you're going to see the intersection. So I found it that if you make it a little bit uh, larger, and you apply some noise, uh, you avoid the decision, and it's not going to be noticeable at all in the render. Once you have a camera movement, uh, you have a, a motion blur, uh, and everything else going on. So after that, I've done, I've done this, uh, I call it by the frost of the camera, since uh, I still have only points, so it's quite uh, easy to do. I saved this. Uh, as a preset and uh, if you want you can do the same i use it very often like to ge delete geometries that i don't need and then i rasterize it by density yeah you can see it like this and from the camera we save this And uh, at the end, uh, I have only this uh, box, uh, just a big box, uh, VDB from polygons. Uh, we, with a very low voxel size. Uh, yeah, it's just 200 voxel per axis. Uh, Polymer wrangle just to decrease the density and to see it through. And this. Uh, just to have uh, some visualization on the viewport. When I render this kind of mist, uh, I usually keep, uh, like I make it very big, like uh, much bigger than a scene, and then I decrease a lot the density. So just to keep it in mind. Uh, and uh, usually I would avoid uh, a lot to do something like this, but in this specific case, it was a night scene. Uh, I, had, I had a camera movement, so it was it would have been hard to fake it in comp, to have some uh, generic mist, like uh, all around the scene. And I wanted the lights of the, if you look at here, I wanted the lights to scatter on the mist. So I decided to render it uh, or render the full sequence. So now I want to show to you 
how I create the ripples uh, on objects uh, and uh, on the ground, for example. What is important uh, is uh, in your RockNet, uh, the one that uh, you are using to render the geometries, uh, is to have uh, the shading position active, the normals, uh, the UVs, uh, and uh, just to show to you an alternative, I created the second UV attribute, UV2, which is created by projecting the UVs from the top of the object. And uh, I'm going to show to you the reason in one second. So I just uh, put a UV project down and I've set it uh, as a UV attribute UV2. So let's go in Nuke. This is the object, and I have uh, an UV pass, the UV2 pass that I mentioned before. I have the normal, this, the normals, and uh, the position. So, given uh, your environment render, one cool trick is to use the ST map. This one, this is, I think, the, one of the best nodes. If you're not a compare, you're not uh, like, uh, you don't have much time to do the shading and everything. This is one of the best nodes you can use in Yook. And uh, what it does is that it takes every texture that you have. In my case, I have this one, right? The one backed from the Arena Ripple Generator to your object. So look. 2000 years later. And uh, why it's caching a little? I want to say that I use it a lot also to just increase uh, and add the details on the objects because uh, it's hard to get uh, like some realistic realistic shader directed from the render. It's like instead of iterating through a lot, uh, all the small details uh, in the occluded parts uh, or um, maybe, you know, where uh, the weather uh, affects the most the look of an object. Uh, I just use this and uh, helps uh, quite a lot. It like, makes everything faster and just also to change, like uh, you can change whatever you want uh, very quickly. As you see, it's like uh, in the object. Uh, the issue that we have now is that uh, it's everywhere, right? So that's why we have the normals. So yeah, it should be the normal pass. I just took the epsilon axis, so just the up vector, right? I grade it a little just to remove what wasn't really pointing that much up. And here it is. You have the you have the rain ripples on top of your object. So here it is. And now you're going to tell me if you're really picky. Here there is an issue, right? Because here we have the UVs of the object. If you go here, you see, we have this. So how do we avoid it? Easy. We create the UV2 attribute that we mentioned before. So by projecting the UVs from the top. And since we already know that we are going to remove it with these, with the normals, right? Doesn't really matter what happens below. So, if this happens, this stretching, we don't really care. Or better, I, I believe it's also going to help, because it looks like uh, it's uh, going down. Okay, if you look this here, and we have a little bit of stretching here, like close to the borders, let's say, it's like going to help it adds variation and looks like a the water is falling down. Look. So here it is, Magia Magia. We have 
are in ripples without themes. Uh, last thing I want to mention is uh, for the light. So, for the rain, like what uh, I've seen, like uh, it really makes the difference in the look, is that uh, once you render the light, you can uh, apply some glow on top of the rain to extend it a little. If you look like here, I have this red light, which is maybe big like this, right? Okay. So, how much is casting on the mist is, for example, like this, then it starts to really fade out. But to look here, the rain, it's like it's still very red, right? Much farther. And this helps a lot. Like, uh, this fakes uh, the refraction of it uh, and uh, how much uh, it picks up the light uh, so easily. So yeah, that that will really work well. If you look here, also, and you can make this in compound very easy. Just uh, add on top of the rain your uh, glow, your additional glow given by the light. That that's it. And I think it's pretty much everything. Once you add on top all the elements, uh, like the rain splashes on the ground, the ripples, uh, the reflections, uh, of course you are going to render the ground with some reflections, right? Uh, the lights, the mist, uh, everything adds on top uh, like really well. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to try to make another one in the future, but uh, again, please, uh, as <laughs> in the past video, let me know what you want to see because uh, I really have an idea what it might be interesting and uh, I'm making it for you guys, so please let me know. I don't want to make a video that uh, no one is interested to. And um, I don't know, have fun, do some magic, and uh, if you do some rain in your own projects uh, using these concepts, uh, please uh, let me know. I would be very curious to see your results. Bye.